Uh, today, I want to show you some uh, antique stereo viewers of my own collection. Um, and as many of you may know, there are basically two types of viewers. One type for only one stereo image, typically the, the handhelds, and um, one type that uh, I would call multi-viewers, because you can insert multiple stereo images at once and watch them one after another by turning a knob or a crank or by pushing a lever, etc. And my presentation is all about those multi-viewers and about the technical effort and uh, inventiveness to reduce their size. Well, the history of multi-viewers starts in the 19th century with the so-called revolving stereoscopes that were available as large floor stand stereoscopes for around 200 views or as tabletop viewers for 50 views. And I would like to set the size of these tabletop viewers that you can see behind me, for example. Um, I would like to set a uh, the uh, the size of these tabletop viewers as a reference because i think that kind of viewer marks the beginning for all further developments the height of these tabletop viewers is always about 50 centimeters um, with the lenses at a level of about 40 centimeters which is just comfortable uh, if you sit on a chair and have the viewer on a table so, but let's have a look inside. I will change the picture on the right now. Um, the slides are attached to a kind of belt um, made of fabric or of metal that can be revolved uh, by two knobs at the outside of the viewer. And this system actually never disappeared, even though many other systems have been developed since. By the turn of the century, the French Jules Richard advertised a stereoscope of the standard tabletop size that could hold up to 300 views instead of just 50. Well, this is just halfway true. Actually, you can load just 25 glass slides at one time. But since these slides are stored in a handy tray, it's easy to exchange the tray to watch the next series or so. So what about the 300 views? Well, that's also true because the mechanism in the upper part of the viewer is actually much smaller than the revolving system. And that leaves pretty much space below where three drawers can store four trays each with 25 slides, slides each, and that makes a total of 300. And as you can imagine, the tray system can easily be expanded to an unlimited amount of photos that are constantly available. And I think that's why, why uh, many other manufacturers produced viewers uh, that worked likewise. For example, these ones. All these viewers have a lower part to store trays and an upper part for the mechanism. Some are a little larger, some are a little smaller, but still they have approximately the standard tabletop size of 50 centimeters. Um, and it's easy to imagine that with trays, the number of slides was no longer a selling point. Instead, manufacturers tried to improve the mechanism or at complications like additional lenses. And uh, the height of the mechanism was at least around um, three times the height of the glass slide, as you can see on the very left viewer. You can imagine the, the eyepieces are one, one time uh, the, the height of the slides, and below you have two times another. Um, Yes, one time uh, the glass slide height for the viewing level, one time for the tray in the middle, and one time for two metal bars below that would uh, move up to push the one single slide to the viewing level. And sometimes there was also a plaque uh, 
a black uh, board uh, involved to cover the bright background while the stereo views were changed. And this increased the minimum height to uh, four times of the viewing format, as you can see on, in the middle and on the left. As I mentioned before, the, re the revolving system um, never disappeared. Matei, a French manufacturer, developed a nice and uh, quite slim viewer called Stereoscope Américain pour Foyer. Uh, he was able to reduce the horizontal di dimensions of the housing because he used a smaller revolving system entirely made of metal, which uh, fitted tight into the viewer. The revolving system was also optimized in a way that uh, the slides kind of snap into the best viewing position while you turn the knob. And finally, he uh, used lenses that allowed a lower distance to the stereo slides. The focusing mechanism was mounted outside the housing, as you can see. And there were two versions available, one with exchangeable belt and one without. And as you can see, we are at about 45 centimeters in total. The German manufacturer Ernemann took a different approach. Normally, a mechanism is mounted in a metal rack, and then the entire mechanism is put inside an empty wooden box. The uh, so-called magazine stereoscope used the wooden housing itself as a rack for the mechanism. That means that the uh, shafts of the mechanism are mounted directly to the outside of the viewer. And that's why this viewer is hardly wider than the trays themselves, as you can see on the right picture. And if you want it even smaller, you could simply unmount the storage base. Of course, there were more viewers available without base. Richard, um, sold an almost cubic taxifold in 98. And you could also unscrew the base of uh, two of the viewers that I mentioned earlier. But before it gets really tiny, let me show you two more mechanisms that are actually smaller than most of the tray systems. The Planox system, which was sold in Germany as Heidoplast by the German uh, manufacturer Ranke und Heidecke, uh, the Planox system used magnets to pull up the slides. So there was no need for, um, for space below for the metal bars. And as you can see on the right picture, there is almost no mechanism inside the viewer. It was all done by the magnets. Though uh, the manufacturer obviously did not try to reduce the outer dimensions of the viewer. It's still 35 centimeters and it could have been much, much smaller. One drawback of this system is that you have to put a, a metal stripe on each single glass slide to make it viewable in the Planox system. And here comes another. Even though um, this Leroy has a storage base, the mechanism itself is quite small and clever. You could also unmount the storage base and it was also available completely without. And here's how it works. If you look closely on the right picture, there are two little rubbers that grip the slide from both sides. And as soon as the entire slide leaves the tray, two additional rubbers are put into position at the lower edges of the slide. So it's really like you would use your fingers and grab the slide and take it out. I don't know why this, this uh, this uh, mechanism works really, really well, even though the viewer is quite rare. Here comes the next one, the stereoscope classeur portative, which means portable. Um, 
This is produced by the French manufacturer Mackenstein or later Frankia. And um, it's operated in the following way. Uh, by pressing down a metal bar, some kind of hook on the in the lower part pushes up the slide. And this system um, makes the viewer quite small. I, I don't know if you can see it clearly if you if you take a look at the right picture. Um, I'm pressing down the, the uh, metal bar and you can see in the middle there is one one hook that's coming up and this would um, push the slide upwards. It works quite good, but navigating through the tray is absolutely not comfortable. Still, it's an interesting mechanism, I think. The main advantage of the German stereo spec is the size of the image magazines. These are no trays, these are so-called um, leporellos. It's, it's like an accordion. And these um, folded uh, magazines are inserted into the upper part of the viewer and a lever on the right lets uh, the images slip through one after another. And this works actually quite nice. And it was quite popular for a long time in Germany. It was produced by, uh, by Ika and by Zeiss later. But uh, exchanging the photos from the Leporellos is uh, really a hassle. And you don't want um, the, the magazine to get stuck inside the viewer. It's almost impossible to, uh, to get it out. All right, these uh, two, the Multifold and the Minimus, are quite famous, I think. Um, and they work actually without a real mechanism. It's just uh, gravity that operates the slides. As you can see in the picture in the middle, the slides are stored in some kind of tray in the upper part. And by, by moving the entire ocular piece, um, the very last slide would fall one uh, level lower to the ocular position. And if you turn further, the next would fall down and the first one would fall down completely into the base. And the base could be taken out and put on top of the viewer. And then you would just simply uh, pull out the bottom of the uh, tray. And that way you have it loaded again. The minimus on the right is even smaller and it has no door in the base. So how do you get the slides back to top? It's simple, just turn the whole viewer upside down and they will fall back into position. The drawback is that you cannot exchange the trace. So you are limited to 20 or 25 slides. There are additional boxes that work uh, with uh, the system, but actually it's, it's more for, for um, yeah, a little number of slides. But it's nice. And I think these uh, busy viewers always look, uh, look very pretty. Now it gets even smaller. Richard um, produced this uh, stereoscope system Janholz. It's known very little about it because it was never official, officially announced in the Richard catalogs. Basically, um, there, are, there are two boxes, one, one in the upper part and one in the down part, and there are springs in it that will press uh, the slides to the back of the viewer. And if you push out um, a knob on the side, as you can see on the uh, right picture, you could operate one slide to the, to the next level or to the top. The bad thing is the slides touch each other while uh, being moved. So you would scratch the slides after a while. Um, so I think this viewer might have been for advertisement purpose. It, ha it has a nice handle, so it's actually a handheld. Um, 
And I think it was loaded with a series of slides, maybe maybe for some products that were sold or something like that. And um, that's one possibility why it's not mentioned in any catalog. It works very reliable, but the drawback is, as I said, that you would scratch the slides. And I think uh, here's the last one, the Planox Apiscope which is uh, like a monkey viewer. Um, it's uh, operated without magnets. As you can see, it has exactly the same dimensions as a normal handheld uh, Brewster viewer. But if you, uh, if you move a little hook in the, in the uh, bottom, uh, a magazine will drop down. And whenever you push it back into the viewer and let it fall down, again, it will change the slide. And it's like, like in an endless uh, repetition. You have 12 slides that you can store inside. You can exchange the magazine. And while you are pressing uh, the magazine inside the viewer and let it fall back, uh, you would move on to the next slide. So that's the smallest and really a handheld uh, multi-viewer that I've um, seen until now.